Hello everybody, this is Lino Tadros. I'm very excited about this uh, three-part video I'm going to be making. My goal is to demonstrate the ability of querying a SQL database using a large language model. So we're going to have three parts to this. The first part would be to set up a project maybe in Visual Studio Code and explain the database that we are going to use. It can be any SQL database, it doesn't really matter. The second part would be to use Langchain directly as an orchestrator to allow us to pass the schema of the database with the question that we are trying to ask to the prompt and allow the LLM and the orchestration to negotiate together until they can provide us uh, with the correct answer. The final and third part, we will use Lambda Index. Lambda Index, will, uh, which is better actually at track, the retrieval of multi-generation, and the reason for it has special classes for SQL databases that can be very, very useful. Not only that, but you can also embed and vectorize your entire schema for that database to make it available for questions and queries for the future at any time. I'm very excited about this. Let's go ahead and start with the first part, which is to set up to get everybody ready to go. All right, so there is my Visual Studio code. I created a completely empty folder on my hard drives called it YouTube SQL LLM. There is nothing in it. And the first thing I usually like to do is to create a virtual environment so that when I go ahead and do and bring in packages for Python and so on, I don't mess this up for the entire machine. I might actually have other projects on my machine that need different version numbers of specific things. So whenever uh, you want to clean this up, always create a folder. The first thing you want to do, create a virtual environment. How do you do that? Uh, we will go ahead and do a control shift P here in Visual Studio um, code. And notice we have here something called Python create environment. And we have a choice. We can use the uh, virtual environment or Conda. Either one of them will work depending on what you prefer to use. I'm going to use a virtual environment in here. And then it's going to ask me which uh, version of Python. I'm going to use the latest and greatest one. I mean, uh, I tried it with uh, 3.11 and 3.10. It still worked as well. So I'm going to bring in 3.12 and here 64-bit. We will give it a few seconds and it will create a brand new uh, folder called .vnv. And this is where all my uh, libraries will end up going. So you will notice here there are not too much, but once I start bringing in some files and some packages using pip, for instance, it will automatically bring this in and will make it work. Sounds good. I'll come back after it finishes. And indeed it finished and Visual Studio Code saying the following environment is selected. So I can actually make sure to bring up a terminal here at the bottom and your virtual environment was successfully activated. So a lot of people like to see the word VNV here on the left side of the command line, but Visual Studio is telling you that even though you cannot see it, it is activated and it's being used. So we are in pretty good shape. You can actually start doing that at this time. This is the part where you will go, for instance, here in the command line and you will say pip install and you start bringing in one after the other, all the stuff that we're going to be needing like, for instance, Langchain and Langchain Community and Langchain OpenAI and uh, SQL Alchemy and all of these things. But I usually like to make this a lot cleaner, especially that I'm going to be including this code on GitHub for everybody to have. So my favorite things to do, of course, is to click on the plus sign in here. And uh, no, not here. Let me go ahead and I want to make it at the same level at the root of that folder. So I'm going to go ahead and say no. And we'll click outside of it. We'll click on this plus sign. There you go. And I'm going to call this one the requirements.txt file. So we'll say requirements.txt. And inside of this requirements.txt, I'm going to be pasting in all the uh, different packages in Python that I'm going to need. Langchain, Langchain Community, Langchain OpenAI, SQL Alchemy. I'm going to also use the uh, PyODBC. And later on for part three of this uh, video series, I'm going to use Llama uh, Index and Llama Index LLM OpenAI. All right, what, how do I actually make this work? First of all, let's do a control S to save this file. I can actually run now the pip install on the dash R to make sure everything I've placed inside of my requirement text will get installed. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and say pip install dash R. And notice actually the copilot is so nice. <laughs> it automatically knows that this is exactly what I'm trying to do. And it points to my requirements.txt. Let's push enter in here. And we'll give it about uh, three or four minutes. It's going to install the kitchen sink for all of these things. I will come back after all of the stuff has been installed uh, in specifically this folder, not globally to my machine. 
And voila, it took about four and a half minutes or so, but it installed the kitchen sink of all of these things. And if I want to see exactly where it occurred, if I open up the lib, the lib again for the libraries, notice there was only two packages, but now I have tons of different packages because a lot of, a lot of these have, of course, dependencies and so on. But I know that Lama, in, uh, Lama Index got installed, Langchain got installed, the community for Langchain got installed. So we, we are in a pretty good shape. Now I can actually close down my V environment and I can start focusing on uh, my projects. So I'm going to create a couple of Python files. But uh, before I get into the Langchain and all that, I want to finish up part one to explain exactly what I'm going to do with my, my database. So I'm going to open up Microsoft SQL Server uh, Management Studio. And I have a lot of the databases in here. This is my local SQL Express. Uh, again, it could be any database. You can. I've done this with Azure SQL databases. I've done it on uh, data centers. I did it locally on my machine. I use SQL Express. All of them will work. Okay. So for this specific example, I wanted to actually use uh, one of the uh, great CMS systems in the world, which is Sitefinity. Again, this could be a Kentico database for a CMS, Sitecore, it could be Sitefinity. I chose to do this with Sitefinity in here. So there is uh, a database that I have locally on my machine. This is a snapshot for one of my databases that I'm using for my website. And there is a, over 250 tables. So it's a pretty significant database. It has all my blogs, all my press releases. Uh, all the users, all the dynamic and um, comments and everything. There is tons of information in here right away. So it would be nice, of course, that I can actually chat with this database and all the content and the relationship it has between all the different tables in English. So a business analyst in my company can just go in and ask questions. Hey, uh, what is the most used uh, or viewed blogs in the last 30 days? Or I can actually say how many admins and what's their email address available in the database. Uh, what is the most used uh, press release in the last uh, year, for instance. All of these things that you might be interested in could be done very easily by a business analyst that doesn't know SQL or uh, not technical enough, but definitely would like to get the most out of the entire database. So this is what I'm, I wanted to show you so far. And uh, now that it's all set up, now we can actually start working with uh, the part two for Langchain. So I'll see you again in the next video.